to All Things LGBTQ Plus Youth, Youth Edition. Edition. Today is February 4th, 2018. My name is Jules Caserta. I use they, them pronouns. I am Steve Flora. Steve is a nickname. I use she, her pronouns. And today we will be talking about a lot of things, mainly toxic gender stereotypes. And to start that off, throughout this we will be referring to gender and sex as two different things, because they are. So that's just the first kind of Disclaimer, and the first thing I'm going to be talking about is toxic masculinity. <laughs> Where are we going to start? Where then? are we going to start? That's a good question. So to start off, why don't we define toxic masculinity? So it's, it's the cultural ideas of manliness, right? The mm -hmm. sort of toxic idea of same what a man has to be. Same with toxic femininity. Femininity. just switch around. Yeah. And like traits for toxic masculinity would be like really aggressive, both like violent, violent and like sexually aggressive. Also unemotional and like un they aren't allowed to cry. They're dominant and like they can't be victims of abuse and things like that's th things like that is what A we're going to be referring stereotypes. to. A lot of stereotypes that are just wrong and super harmful to m men in general, mm -hmm. to everyone but men. These are mm -hmm. trait. These are stereotypes about men that then immensely harm men, <laughs> mm -hmm. which most stereotypes immensely harm a lot of the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, so, how they harm, I'm going to talk about a little one that I can talk about a lot, is the um, sexually aggressive and all men want sex. And that's in very, it's, a, it's an issue for ace and arrow men and boys, because it, it leads a lot of them to feel N not like they're not a real man like they're broken or not manly enough or that they're weird and they have to want sex but if they're ace obviously they don't mm -hmm. so Absolutely. it leads to a lot of self-hate mm -hmm. and like really just like direct like really bad stuff directed at yourself coming at from you to yourself so there's a lot of self-hate and loathing and problems there and then there are also men who take toxic masculinity to a whole new extreme. Yeah. I want you to talk about that because okay. I well, feel like I can't very well. <laughs> so I think that some men who kind of know how, you know, kind of masculine they present themselves and how they put on a front, um, they are, you know, they're aware of that, but then they also kind of go along with these stereotypes and that kind of consumes them. Um, but not, not all, but men who do follow those stereotypes, which is a common thing, happens. Um, I don't know, that's kind of a hard thing to talk about when you're not directly, direct, directly. There you go, you got it. Experiencing <laughs> it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I think that to speak fully correctly on it, we'd need another party of mm -hmm. someone who's able to speak about that um, mm -hmm. a bit better, but. So do you think really extreme toxic masculinity and sex would be connected to like rape culture and stuff like that? It can, but I feel like that's something that is very connected to the person themselves and who mm -hmm. they are and what they're, it, I don't know if I wanna say what they're into, but like kind of what they're, no, like, <laughs> in terms of what they um, kind of stand with and all of that. Um, so I think that like a lot of, um, from what I'm aware of, a lot of uh, rape crises has come from a lot of, you know, refusal from victims and, um, you know, kind of them doubting their abuser of, you know, whatever, and then it kind of leads to some other things, and it's not really a choice, unfortunately, because sometimes you can't get out of it, which is a little bit unrelated. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, but I think that, um, ha like, having that be connected is definitely a big piece that is very complicated, but mm -hmm. because I'm not someone who has experienced that firsthand, but like, 
I know enough about it to talk some about it, but mm -hmm. I don't know if you have anything else about that that you're kind of thinking about. Well, no, there's, there's also the um, like idea of toxic masculinity that mm -hmm. men can't be a victim of abuse, that it's not, it's just not possible for a woman to abuse a man, which is just right. completely false, and it also then leads to men feeling like they can't speak out uh, like about what they've experienced. Right. And it's just, that could also almost be like toxic masculinity, the woman abuser thinking that they aren't the abuser because they are female. Absolutely. Which is blatantly wrong because if you are in a relationship with someone and you are using the power you hold in that relationship against them, you are an abuser. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter what gender or sex you have. Or you how are. it's presented. If it's, it's like, if, it's a, if it's like a physical thing yeah. or even an emotional or yeah, verbally absolutely. thing. Verbal, verbally? A verbal thing. Is verbally a word? Yes, but not the right context. Not the right context. You know, okay, fair enough. I mean, are we like talking about more, are we trying to get into like kind of some of that a little bit deeper? We can go wherever okay. you want to go. Um, so I think that like a lot of the stories that you hear on TV or whatever about these young girls getting abused and like, or like, the, yeah, like on the news, main mm -hmm. news stream, it's like, <clears throat> you only ever hear it from like certain perspectives, but it's also like you always only hear that the abuser is a male and it's um, like, I feel like it, it's happening reverse roles or whatever, whatever is happening. Like it's happening in many different ways and people just aren't talking about that because people don't care about that as much. And mm -hmm. it's not as important because people might think it's oh it's not as bad like because mm -hmm. a woman did this to another ma man or woman it's like mm -hmm. or so, just another person really it's like it's not as bad but it definitely is taking advantage of people is really really not okay um, yeah so like if a man were to come out and talk about like being abused by their girlfriend then it's mm -hmm. that's met even a woman coming talk, talk, coming out and talking about the abuse they w received from their boyfriend still is met with a lot of stigma, which is a huge issue and just isn't okay in general. But then I feel like men get a lot, even like more. Wh and just say that they get more is insane because women already get so much when they are like, well, coming so out against their abuser. Mm -hmm. So and there's it's like already so much, when, like so much like b negative like um, thoughts around when women come out of against their abuser and there's even more yeah because it's kind they of think like they think that men can't abuse that if a, like that they can take it or whatever mm -hmm. that they are that they should be strong enough to take whatever their girlfriend or boyfriend is doing right it's like there's one side of one thing that people are just expecting and like you know not want to hear about but are expecting to hear about and then there's another side of things where it's like gender revol roles switch and it's like well, that's, it's just interesting that people don't look further into things, you know, kind of start to actually understand, like, why things are happening or if they can figure out why, but see different points of things that they might not see. Mm -hmm. And I think the thought that, like, men should be strong enough to take the abuse can also kind of tie into men being unable to cry without not being mm -hmm. seen as like a real man where they have to be unemotional and strong and like the stereotypical like strong dude that is just right. like a stone face and never feels like anything other than like anger mm -hmm. which again also leads to or even seriousness more. anyways because it doesn't have to be like anger it's just like a whole like presentation of being serious and like there and I don't know kind of like yeah yeah it's like a weird presence all yeah. the time mm -hmm. and the and then the fact that it's perpetuated the idea that men can't cry and that the boys are growing up in that with that idea, then it leads them to, yeah. a, again, another cycle of self-hate and self-loathing, which is going to come up a lot as we talk about right. toxic masculinity, toxic femininity, and all the toxic things. Right. And I think that, that like, shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the image that's presented is not... 
like I think it's good to know about these things and I'm glad that I'm you know learning more about these things as I'm going because it's very very interesting to see you know different points of you know different people's opinions and what they're seeing in their homes or whatever whatever the situation is but um different people are just feel like pressured you know into being certain things that are presented to them through the media or through you know what it, like whatever they're learning or seeing this kind of thing and so it's kind of it's very unfortunate that um a good amount of people are left with no choice but to feel like that Mm -hmm. And then there's also a certain stigma that comes around t just talking about toxic masculinity in general, especially, like, people are like, well, it's, like, man-haters, or, like, they're trying to take away their masculinity, or they hate, like, uh, man-haters, or that they're trying to... A word that I saw a lot when I was researching this that I hated was, uh, pussyify, all men. Yeah. And just, I read that word, and first of all, I was like, it's not a real word. Second of all, I was like, what does that even mean? <laughs> I haven't heard that one many times, so I yeah. don't really know exactly what, just kind of the, what context it's used in and, like, why mm -hmm. it's used. And I was, as I was researching all of this for this episode, I was going through, like, these comments that I was looking at, and it was just, like, these men who were, like, complaining of the fact that we were, like, using the term toxic masculinity, and I was looking at it, and I was like, this is the prime example of toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you're perpetuating this idea that it's not real, that yeah. all that this is just how all men are, just how their brains work. And if you're someone, like, watching this and thinking about, like, I'm not trying to call anyone out, but, like, if you're watching this and just, you know, kind of feeling like, oh, like, that's incorrect, it's, it's okay to have your own opinions and thoughts. But, like, there's definitely a fine line of things where you need to, like, step back and, like, talk about other things too and it may be good for you to do that as well because you might be learning different things and like different things that you might not have known that might help you open up and kind of break free from everything which is mm -hmm. very important sometimes but mm -hmm. and discussing that toxic masculinity is not saying all men are bad or evil and Absolutely. the term is not an assertion that all men are naturally violent toxic mm -hmm. masculinity is not saying that all masculinity is toxic Toxic mm -hmm. is an adjective right. put in front of masculinity to describe a specific type of masculinity. Right. And it's not, yeah, all it's not it. everybody. It's just there's definitely a good amount of people who are like this mm -hmm. and don't have any other, like, knowledge of how to be. So mm -hmm. Because being a masculine person as itself isn't a bad thing. Whether you be male or female, being masculine isn't a bad thing. It's just when it reaches those really toxic levels where mm -hmm. and, like, you can go from... Like, there's, like, masculinity, and there's toxic masculinity, and there's insanely toxic masculinity. And then there's also, I was actually looking at something, it was, like, it's actually, it's, like, homophobic masculinity. It's, like, very, it's very interesting, but there's, like, a lot of, like, some people tend to call other, like, if a m more toxic masculine person is talking to another one who isn't as, to like, you know. So, like, super toxic and toxic. <laughs> whatever, who's... So uh, toxic, a person of toxic masculinity talking to someone who is, you know, just them that are themselves and they're emotional and when they need to be and, you know, whatever they're, you know, they're them. And it's very commonly used, like, the word gay is used oh, yeah. so much towards, like, from men saying it to other men who may or may not identify as you know, a part of the queer community or not. Like, it's like, that's, that's like a term mm -hmm. that people are using to just make fun of people for being emotional and like having actual emotions as like when they're just over here, you know, just sitting, looking like a rock and like emotionless. It's like not, it's not mm -hmm something that I really understand, but it's, I find it interesting, so. Yeah, by using the term gay in like a toxic masculinity mm -hmm. sense, not only are you perpetuating toxic masculinity, you're also per 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 perpetuating <laughs> uh, gay stereotypes that are. Absolutely. It's just so many stereotypes, and why do we need all these stereotypes? We don't. That's the answer, we don't need these stereotypes. Just. Don't use them. Don't mm. believe them. Or just, just keep them to yourself if mm. you're 
if you're into them, just that's something that you need to really contain and mm -hmm. not share with the public. Mm -hmm. And like what you were saying, an emotional man or literally just a human right. who happens to be male is labeled as like <coughs> gay or girly or just stuff like that. And it just pisses me off so much. Because one, there are, you can, there are girls who aren't really emotional. It's not, right. it's also, it's not that, not that's presumably toxic femininity. And it's just a cycle of perpetuating these bad stereotypes that nobody needs. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm getting frustrated. But I just threw around the term toxic femininity. Mm, Should we yes. try to move into that a little bit? What is toxic femininity? Is it real? Ooh. Which is the question we have to ask about all of them, apparently. Is this real? Mm, it Are definitely real? is, is out there. It's not... Know. It's not something that's not present. You just don't see it quite as much as... Mm -hmm toxic masculinity it's just it's something that you're not faced with as much because it isn't like as present because the whole like stigma with males is that they're like big and powerful and whatever but women can be just as like powerful and like muscular or whatever as men mm -hmm. who are sig <laughs> stigmatized to be mm -hmm. like that it's like okay i i think you do see toxic femininity a lot i think a lot of toxic femininity is more internalized, like where, right. as you were talking about, toxic masculinity is like kind of the big buff dude who's like really like kind of loud and angry and aggressive. Whereas toxic femininity is the idea of toxic femininity is like soft, nurturing, weak women. Right. Where just because th those are the like traits and ideas, you, it's a lot quieter and kind of more internalized. And and like I was saying, it's toxic femininity is a self destructive. It's self destructive, and it's something and really direct, directed onto oneself based on societal standards. Mm -hmm. So, so this is stuff like, this is like how a lot of women develop like eating dis disorders or like things like slut shaming. or the Social anxiety is a big thing. Social that anxiety. Well. Mm -hmm. Especially talking about um, eating disorders, it's the idea that women have to be these really like small like thin things that are just bones like that aren't. Whatever that are just bones and have like no fat on them that then leads to the so many young girls wanting to be thinner and wanting to and endangering have, their lives wanting like to have a certain body yeah. type and then that leads into their future when they're like seeing this as like a toddler mm -hmm. this then t leads to that being their only idea of femininity which then leads to self-destructive eating habits and self-destructive habits in general depression anxiety self-harm all of this can be traced in some way connected to toxic femininity which is also true for toxic masculinity. You can see a lot of really unhealthy um, habits coming out of these horrible, horrible ideas. Yeah. I just, just to skip back to eating disorders really mm -hmm. quickly, like I feel like you only, like, there's, a, it's just, I'm real, when I talk about all this stuff and like comparison is media, media is doing this to everybody and it's terrible. It's, it's scary. Like everyone is changing because of, other seeing other people or their thoughts or their expectations and like trying to look up to people in a way I guess but um you don't like I think one like definitely a stereotype that I just kind of like comparis mm -hmm. comparison comparison well no I wasn't done with my sentence yeah. I just kind of put together comparison and um like I feel like you don't expect men to d develop eating disorders, but you, it's more likely to expect a female to develop an eating disorder. And that's like, like there's just a good of chances. It's like how men can't be abused. It's just a thing that right. men don't it's, do. They don't yeah. get, they, it's not something that happens to men, but right. a lot of men do have eating disorders mm -hmm. because there al also are stereotypes and ideals placed on men's um, bodies. Like they have to be the buff mm -hmm. kind of guy. Right. And not everyone can achieve that and it leads to um, there's something called exercise addiction, which is an actual, it's classified as an eating disorder, where all you can do with your time is exercise, exercise, exercise. Right. That's all of your, that's all your like, mind wants your body to ever do, and, and leads to eating very little, because you just want to focus on exercising so much. So it, like, kind of like anorexia, kind of that kind of general realm of things, like that's kind of a similar. Mm -hmm. I, I can, I can talk like so much about eating disorders like on so many mental disorders, because I find them horrifyingly fascinating mm -hmm. right but that is a thing that happens and you, like you said you don't expect it's 
not it's why we talked about men having eating disorders whenever we it's discussed it always is a female example which isn't necessarily mm -hmm. always the case and although it isn't you don't it and because of this people don't see it as as common when in reality it could be as common we're just not talking about it right absolutely i think that mm. sorry to veer off of the main okay. topic of that um but i think it's just it's just the comparison, and it's the comparison of stereotypes and the comparison of, you know, you and another person. It's like, it's really hurtful, and it's like, it's insane. It's like no one hears about this because no one, like everyone gets interested in like the mainstream things that are like, you know, expectations or whatever, hearing about one gender as opposed to the other having this certain issue. And everyone's used to it, even though it's still horrifying and it's still terrible. It's just, it's, it's insane and it's just really hard to watch mm -hmm. happen. It's just not something I like to take part in, but mm -hmm. it's really hard to avoid and it's really frustrating, so. Mm -hmm. And the thing with a lot of these, like, stereotypes is that not, like, none of them are actually, like, rooted in truth because of mm -hmm. uh, someone who is... Um, female by sex and someone who is male by sex, they have virtually the exact same like brain, mm -hmm. like all of it, it's all the same. Like it doesn't females aren't hardwired to be like weaker than men. It's not right. at all how it works. And then because the everyone's their own person, it's diversity. It's like it's everyone is themselves and mm -hmm. they're not another person. It's not something that there's no like cookie cutter exactly. for people because that's just in like ugh. I'm not good with words. <laughs> There's no cookie cutter for like what the yeah, ideal no. female should be. There's no. It's a metaphor. It's good. It's it's a good metaphor. Thank you. I appreciate mm. it. I'm proud of my metaphors. Okay. I think. But veer back. Veer back, and how I want to veer back is um toxic relationship stereotypes. Because mm. I talk like men are really dominant and women are really submissive and weak, and so that leads to really like toxic right home life. Like women have to stay home and take care of children if they have children. Or, but the yeah. women can also go out and work and mm -hmm. be successful while the men, you know, are staying home and taking care of their families. Like, yeah. it's like I don't think that. Like, I think if we move into all of the individual stereotypes, that's just going to be a lot of rambling. But like, mm -hmm. it's very similar to like all of the other things that we've been talking about. It's like comparisons and things like whatever. Like they can be switched. They can be mixed. They can be you know whatever. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, and then I don't know. And then it is for anyone who isn't in that kind of a cookie cutter relationship where it's like women are, they cook, they clean, they stay home, all that stuff, and when men go out and, they're, and they like make money for the family. Anyone who isn't in that is then ridiculed for it. Like if you're, if you're a woman married to a man and he's staying home and raising children, well, you're out um, working. Or even if you're two women or you're two men, if you're not, if you're not in that cookie cutter toxic stereotype of a relationship, then you're ridiculed. And for all of these, if you're not in that, like, if you're not in that box of these toxic stereotypes, you are ridiculed constantly. I mean, that's how it is for anything. If you don't fit the norm, you will be ridiculed. Absolutely. Which is stupid. For lack of a better word, it is stupid. <laughs> I think you kind of said, like, everything I was thinking, so I think I'm out on that one. Yeah, and there's, I, again, like I said, I was, when I was doing research for this, I could find so little on toxic femininity, because it's just people, so many people are like, oh, that's not real. Yeah, it's not in the mainstream and there as are much. Yeah, there are people saying, like, oh, toxic masculinity isn't real, but you hear that term thrown around a lot mm. more, and it is in, in, like, news, and it is in the media, but toxic femininity isn't like, at all. I don't personally know that much about toxic femininity, because it's, like, not mentioned a lot, and it's not, like, mm. so... But it is something that a lot of young girls do experience a lot. It's mm -hmm. just not being talked about. Like in schools, you can see examples of toxic femininity all the time. Absolutely. Of like, where, like you see like an example of toxic femininity is like slut shaming. You see that in like middle school and elementary school, and it's just so strange because now they're being like. It moved from just being in high school, and it's moved down. It's slowly like, get, it's these ideas are slowly going on to the younger and younger generations, yeah. making them kind of more and like giving them more time 
to hate themselves eventually. I mean, like, I'm not trying to, like, I'm not being mean, but there's a lot of people who really fucked things up. Like, it's not something so that many really... things are so screwed up now. It's like, there's, I'm not, like I said, I'm not calling anyone out, but, like, there's definitely certain groups of people that really, really made things a lot more difficult with their opinions and, you know, <clears throat> when they could have just kept them to themselves and, you know, carried on, like... If there hadn't been as much, you know, slut shaming and, you know, just, I guess, insulting, if that makes any sense about all of this stuff. Like, I feel like, I don't know, because mm -hmm. there's, as the years have progressed and decreased at the same time, like, I feel it's a very common thing, like, men and women are just developing more insecurities and more, you know, anxiety and depressive episodes around these things and it's, it's wild it's just really I don't know I kind of got carried away but no. I think yeah. but you were talking about like comparison how like men are can't be abused or men can't get in disorders you also don't really hear about men ever being slut shamed which is a thing they can be yeah. slut shamed I think it's like Every, I think anyone a can be slut shamed term. there might be a different term but I don't I don't know I don't, but I'm just yeah. going to discuss it as right because that's all I'm just saying the same thing you're being shamed for yeah enjoying sex or partaking in it or just dressing a certain way even. Yeah. not even you can be a virgin and still be completely slut shamed just for how you dress yeah. if you're wearing a, if you're a female and you're wearing a low-cut top do you are obviously a yeah. slut and it uh because like you're talking we're talking about like how it's like creeping into like younger generations i see this stuff i would like in my in my middle school experience i have seen this stuff mm -hmm. any female who hangs out with guys is obviously dating all of them yeah, it's obviously it's be all with all of them and it's like what is it's Why? expectations. It's like all of the expectations are so harsh and really just mm -hmm. everyone's just expecting you to be this perfect person. It's just. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the idea that men and women can't be friends. They right. have to be. They have know, to be in a relationship. Or they have to just be doing something. Yeah. And, and I think like, that. Where did that even come from? Things have progressed. They things have progressed because people realize that gay people exist. Right. But like there's also it's like. That's, it's not just that. Yeah. Like, two straight people can be friends, two gay people can be friends. Like, whatever. It's, like, it's it's just really bothersome when, like, all, you just get a bunch of, like, chatter and all this about who you're choosing to spend your time with. And it's, like, you don't have to be romantically involved with anyone to be, you know, friends with them. It's, like, or mm -hmm. hang out with I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just... And I yeah, and I touched on how toxic masculinity can affect aero ace boys and men. Like, toxic femininity also can really affect aero women because it's like mm -hmm. the idea that they have to want this like romantic relationship with like hearts and pink and everything everywhere. And it's just like, no, not everyone wants that. Not everyone right. wants a sexual relationship. Like if you're a guy who may be ace and you could be a female who may be aero, you could be both, you could be right. anything. Right. And that all of this just leads to so much internalized self hate. And the fact that we're seeing this in some in like younger generations, like you meet kids in elementary school who just want to be thinner, like that's right. their goal is to be thinner. That's so sad. And you hear them it's say that, and you're like, well, you're yeah. like, you're like, you're in like first grade. You shouldn't be worrying about this stuff. No one should be worrying about this stuff. But it's like you have a little bit of baby fat. You're supposed to have that. It's okay. It's, I still it's have first baby grade. fat. Ugh. I don't know. I think that like. There's a lot of patience, like, involved mm. with all of this. And I think that, like, internal patience, I guess. Like, you need to be patient with yourself mm -hmm. for all of things Because it's so deeply ingrained in our society at this point that trying to, like, break down these ideas is going to take so long. Like, in inside yourself and with others. Like, like, I still, like, find myself having these toxic thoughts and I have to, like, catch myself and be like, no. That's not how that works. Stop yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Because it's just so deeply ingrained in us at this point. It's so deeply ingrained in everyone because that's what we have been seeing our entire lives. We've been told our entire lives that men are this way and women are this way and that non-binary people are a thing. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> Woof is right, Steve. <laughs> oh, my God. There's so much that I'm getting mm -hmm. so worked up about it. and I, should, I don't want to get worked up about it because right. my face turns red and it's not fun. Anything else we haven't touched on? Um, we have 
there. I feel like we kind of keep veering off from like. Yeah, we do it a lot. Just the th just toxic femininity as a whole. Like I think that we talked. I don't know. I think that if we talk more about like specifically like, um, you know, like there's a lot of there's a lot of um, opinions that are heard. Like maybe talk about some of those that you are aware of, and like then I don't know if we don't think of anything else, we can. Well, I just like individuals' opinions towards others, like. For example, like, lesbians have to be masculine. Mm, or, like, non-binary people have to present as men. Right. And that is neither valid or true. Like, people can be what they want to be. It's not your choice, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Just kidding. But mm -hmm. it's not unfortunately. It's just how it is. It's not anything to be mm -hmm. sorry about or anything. So. And the thing that I've noticed is that with the like rise of non-binary being in like the public eye, you we're now seeing stereotypes pop up for that. Like they have to be masked, they have to have short hair, right. like flannel and all of that. And I see this happening and I'm like, no, stop it. This whole like cause ah, this is non-binary is literally just you don't exist inside like male and female. There right. shouldn't be any stereotypes for that at all. That's kind of the whole point. Like your but boundaries are still your boundaries. They can change, they can develop, they can like Mm -hmm. Whatever, like it's... They're trying to put this identity, this whole point is literally mm. they're not in a box, into a box. Exactly. And so. first off, it just doesn't work that well. Because mm -hmm. there are always going to be these amazing people who are going to break down that box. And right. they're going to they're be a non-binary person with long hair and wears makeup. And mm -hmm. they're going to be, they're gonna be uh, a woman who presents his mask and has short hair and stuff like right. that. And there's going to be a guy who likes to wear makeup and still, and is straight. Guys can wear makeup mm -hmm. and be straight. There's an idea. Guys can be gay and wear makeup and just be all around I, gorge. And it's so amazing when I see just men in makeup look so good so many mm -hmm. most of the time. And I'm like, can you all do this? Because you all look amazing. Um, just a quick thing. There is a podcast. I, I know it's accessible on like the Apple Podcast app, but um, Jonathan Van Ness has a very interesting podcast that I think is very no i'm just saying like there's actually a lot of really mm -hmm. really cool things on there so like if the, if you want to go deeper into that there is actually some about toxic and mm -hmm. uh masculine and yeah and masculinity and femininity so yeah. i just just a side note but i did kind of go on a ramble and to like try to sum up what mm -hmm. i essentially just said is that there are always going to be people who are going to break down these boxes that are right. set for us mm -hmm. because these boxes aren't actually like real they don't make sense they shouldn't they're be real figurative. they're figurative boxes well obviously i'm not in a real box no i know I'm, <laughs> they I'm are figurative that. boxes yes right. but there are always going to be people who like break that break that down and like i love seeing that is amazing and then that's like an amazing thing to see and then you like turn your head this way and it's like you see so many horrible things and it's like why can't it all just be this you know yeah for sure should we end it on a positive note? I think we should. That we usually don't do that. We so it's do we're that. fairly negative people. <laughs> okay. So fi final thoughts, Steve. What are your wrap this up in a neat little sentence? You can't do that. Final um, thoughts. I think that you need to be yourself, despite what other people say. Um, your opinions are valid. You're valid. Um, just thrive, you know, just thrive. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, mine. Society, please take all your little stereotypes, wrap them up in a neat little box, and chuck them out the window. Because we don't need them. All right, so this has right. been All Things LGBTQ Plus Youth, Youth Edition. Edition. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next month.